What is going on guys, Satsuki the Savage here and today I'm going to be giving my final exam review review for Orisuki, alright? Now, first things first, four things I want to say before I start actually talking about this series. I'm sick, alright? So if I look and talk a certain way, you already know why. I just don't feel good. Um, I'll try to keep like sneezing out of the video if that happens, but coughing I may keep in there. I don't know, we'll see. Second is going to be bare minimum. There is no script at all. Just I, I'm, I'm fresh off watching episode 12. So I felt like I wanted to make the video right after watching that episode. I did not want to write or anything. So we're off the cuff. Third, if you have a problem about complaints or critiques or just straight up bitching about a particular series, this, of course, in particular, then... Do not watch this video. Just leave your dislikes and get the fuck up on out of here, all right? Because that's what's going to happen. Fourth, there will be spoilers. So this won't be like my first impressions, even though my first impressions for this series was weird because I didn't want to talk about the premise of the series because it would have ruined everything. And it, it's, I still believe that. But now, since we're in the final stage and I don't really care about spoilers, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, where do we start? Where do we start? <clears throat> All right, so this series, why I liked it in the beginning is that it was this harem series, supposedly. All right, because first it didn't start like that, but it was like a raw con series that had a protagonist who would call other women bitches, which... <laughs> I know, like, I joke about being on the misogynist grind, but it, it wasn't that. It wasn't literally because he was calling women bitches that got me hyped. It was the fact that he was a main character doing that. It was, like, different, okay? Joro felt different from your average harem MC, rom-com MC, because he would be at vulgar towards other people. He didn't seem like this cheery guy. He He felt different. Okay, he felt unique. That was one of the draws in the beginning. Then you had Pansy, who who stayed consistent throughout, but I will say that she started to not falter, really. It's just that the series didn't give her ample opportunity to shine like she did in the beginning because it was just that the cast was smaller then, and with... Yeah, I, and I'll talk. I'll talk about that later. But fuck that. Uh, I'll talk about it later. But Pansy was cool. Her elaborate plans. Um, she was just funny. Even like as a stoic character, I really enjoyed Pansy in the series. All right. Um. That that was like th those two were the people who were carrying the series for me in the beginning. All right. But. That was like first three episodes towards the tail end. Not not even tail end. Like I want to say once we got five episodes deep in Orisuki, that's when it started to go to hell. Because <clears throat> with this series, the whole draw of it was that Joro was different from your generic MC and that the series wasn't your average rom-com or hair or whatever you want to call it. That was the big pull of it. But that's exactly what it became. It became exactly what it said it wasn't. Towards the end of the series, there are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, there are about five girls that fell in love with Joro. Maybe even more. I may be missing somebody. But let's just say it's five, okay? The whole... Joro's character, in the beginning, he wanted to manipulate the situation with him and Sunshine so that he could get one of the girls that Sunshine rejected, okay? That was his, that was his whole goal in the beginning. So, in the beginning... He liked Himawari, I think that's her name, his childhood friend, and he liked Cosmos. He also liked Pansy, 
And I'll get into that whole thing with Pansy because it's really stupid. He also liked Pansy when she didn't have the glasses on or whatever. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to hone in on that later. But the point is, he liked those two, right? And he wanted to get with them. So, when we had the whole plot of him having to play matchmaker and whatnot, and everything fell to shit, but then eventually everything got <laughs> repaired, eventually those two girls that he liked, liked him. Okay, they fell in love with him. So, why then is Joro still acting as if he is this basic dude that doesn't like it? And he still acts as if he's this average MC background character that the series tried to present him as in the beginning. In the beginning, he was like that because, like, nobody liked him. And, but towards the end of it, like, everyone likes him. And he still has an issue choosing a person to get with. And it's kind of like, wait, weren't you trying to get with these two in the beginning? Now they are in love with you, so what's your... What's the hesitation? I don't really understand that. And it's not even a situation of being indecisive. It's just that he does not go, he does not pursue anything with them. It, it's very strange to me. Okay? So it, it's a problem of you you had Jero had this motivation, and it just like we're supposed to forget about it or something. I don't really understand that, all right? And it's, again, it's the whole problem of this series was trying to present Joro as a background character who wasn't like an average hair MC, and that's exactly what he became. Everybody fell in love with him. Everybody. Damn near everybody. <laughs> so, yeah. And let's get into the pansy situation, because that in particular frustrates the fuck out of me the fuck out of me he loves pansy okay joro but only when she takes off this disguise my nigga the disguise comprises of fucking glasses her hair being tied and her shirt actually being done like a like a regular fucking high schooler. That's the disguise. So you're telling, like, look, basically, this, this is this is fucking Juro. This is fucking Juro. Let let let's say I'm this dude right now. All the bitches love me. I I got I got sixty two holes on my dick. This is this is how Juro. This is how it would be for Juro or some uh, a female equivalent of Juro. If I put on these glasses. And I had my fucking hair. I had a hair tie like this. Look, this, this is fucking Juro's mind. If I put on these glasses and had my hair like this, then I'm a completely different motherfucker. That that's how he thinks. And I know Pansy does look a little different with you know with the glasses and her hair tied up, but they're the same fucking person. This is like some Superman Clark Kent type of shit. Like you're looking at the same person. It's not like she has a, a, a overhaul on makeup or something and she's wearing a wig. She is the exact same person. So if you fell in love with this pansy who has her hair down, who has her boobs out and her hair, you know, undone. How are you just dissing pansy and calling her ugly? He literally called her ugly. You don't become ugly just by wearing f fucking glasses. <laughs> With the police <laughs> on the chase, uh, let me take a break because, yeah, my nose is getting clogged up. All right, we're back. So, yeah, the whole point is that Joro oh my god like he makes no his character makes no sense that whole 
situation makes no sense to me. How can you fall in love with her and the only thing she changes is her hair a little bit and she wears glasses and then all of a sudden she's ugly. It's the same fucking person. Like, Joro isn't a five-year-old kid. Like, I don't understand how that does not register in his brain. And it's like, if you date her, don't you think... Like, like let's just... Let's just... <laughs> Let's appease him and say, okay, she looks ugly with this. You act like she's going to always have that or like, I don't, it's so fucking stupid to me. It's so stupid. And the, and the point is the whole show would fall apart without that stupid plot point. Because if Joro, if he did fall in love with this girl, not if, he did fall in love with this girl, but that whole plot point is the reason why the series can drag on for 12 episodes because it should end from episode one by the time he sees Pansy with this whole uh, makeover, this pseudo makeover. So everything is predicated on Joro being a fucking dumbass. That's how the series is. And, you know, it's my fault. It's my fault. Like, I'm not going to put everything. I'm not going to put the onus on the series entirely. It's my fault because that's how it was presented in the first three episodes. So all all the problems I'm having right now were there, but it wasn't super apparent until things kept going on and on. Because as they kept introducing more girls, I just started to think like, wait, why is Joro acting like he's still this background character? And why is he still acting stupid? Why doesn't he pursue a relationship with one of these girls if that's what he was trying to pursue in the beginning of the series? I'm not understanding any of this shit. And then towards the last two episodes, we have this new love rival for Pansy, which that does not make sense either. Everybody is trying to push this dude. His name is Jose. A nigga named Jose loves Pansy too, okay? Everybody's trying to push jose and pansy and that's supposed to make joro feel jealous because obviously he has something for pansy even though he won't fucking admit it for 10 fucking episodes but they're supposed to push jose as this love rival for pansy okay everybody's trying to push it okay everybody's playing their ships and whatever but the problem is, they know Pansy does not like this dude, but they try to push them either. They don't care. It's like, wait, huh? Doesn't a relationship have to be mutual? Like, what is this, an arranged marriage? Like, what the fuck is this? Why? And, and the thing is, they know that Pansy does not like him. They know it. But they act like her feelings don't go into the equation by the end of the series by the last episode fucking Joro has this stupid challenge with Jose and they're like we'll let everybody else decide this is a popularity contest if you give this hairpin to whoever that's that's the relationship you are trying to push and that person will be the person to end up with pansy and whoever loses cannot talk to pansy like what when does Pansy get to decide the shit? Why are they deciding who gets to talk, who doesn't get to talk to Pansy and who gets with Pansy? Let's say Jose wins. So does Pansy have to now be in a relationship with him? Because she does not like him. This does not make sense. And the whole, the, the way Jose got introduced into the series is because they're closing the fucking library. What school closes a library? I'm sorry. Like, maybe this is a thing. Maybe this is a thing. I But I've never heard of that shit. I'm sorry. I've never heard of that. So if, you know, if I sound ignorant to this, this has happened to your school or something, I'm sorry. But I've never heard of a fucking library closing at a school maybe a school doesn't have a library in the first place but what school closes a library they're acting like it's some obscure club or something it's a fucking library they're like this isn't popular popular enough what huh that's the whole reason jose got introduced 
well, not introduced because he was there before, but that's the whole reason why he got pushed into the plot with him and Pansy and all this drama started because the library was closing. This series, man. Oh my god. And the thing is, it, it sometimes it's funny, but I feel like it tries too hard and it, like just disregarding the nonsensical stuff, it can be funny. Alright. I think some of the jokes are really hit and miss. The bench joke was really funny in the beginning, but when you keep repeating it over and over and over, it's like yo. We get it. All right. This shit isn't funny anymore, though. They kept introducing the bench. And I was like, yo, I mean, like, it was cool at first because it was just like, oh, man, it's like it, it was new. It was fresh. It got stale towards the end of it. All right. Like, it felt like that was the last joke to latch on to. Like, oh, we know the show is mid, but we, we got a bench joke for you. Come back. Come back, baby, please. It's like, no. I don't fuck with you anymore. I know. I don't know. And it, it did. It did little things like fourth wall breaks. It kept doing that. Like Joe Rowe would comment, "This happened on this episode," or um, there, there was another. I, I think I think he did that a couple of times. But yeah, they would break the fourth wall a lot. Um, which that can be funny sometimes, but. It just didn't really resonate with me. I, I really like Cosmos in the series. She was a really cool character. It's just that the reason why I feel like it wasn't as strong as it was in the beginning, you know, again, disregarding the nonsensical stuff, is because when you introduce all these girls, it felt like everybody's role was diminished. Like Cosmos wasn't, again, she was one of the funniest characters to me, but... She just did not have that much of a presence in the series because there were so many other people now. It, you introduced this big cast of a harem for really no reason because I don't even remember a lot of these people's names. And it's like when you had Cosmos, Pansies, Himawari, Sunshine, Juro, that's all you needed. All you needed was those five characters. Sure, you could have introduced more characters to spice the things up, but these characters became a part of the group. So they were attached to the plot lines and you just had to put focus on them, which took away from other people. All right. Even like I said, even Pansy had a more diminished role in a series after this big cast got introduced. So I, I feel like the series was trying to put too much on its plate and it started to fall after that. But Man, um, I, I think that's pretty much all I want to say about the series, man. This is like the definition of mid. Like, this is a 5 out of 10 type of series. And it's disappointing because I, I thought it could be a 9 out of 10 series. Silly me. Or 8 out of 10, whatever. It's not that. Alright, I can see how someone has enjoyment for the series, but... For me, who had high expectations for it, who thought this was not going to be your standard hair on rom-com anime, I am thoroughly, thoroughly disappointed. I do not like this shit. All right? I, and I, if I got you into the series, because I hyped it up. I hyped it up. My bad. That's all I can offer you. My bad. My condolences. I am I'm fucking sorry. My bad. I can't say it won't happen again, but that's on me. Alright, but that's it for the video, man. Like, dislike, do what you gotta do. Alright, do what you gotta do. Satsuki the Savage, out. Am I dying to live or am I living to die? Living a lie with my hands stressed out, see I'm stressed about.